Okay, welcome back to another word study on person. And the reason we're doing this word study out of the King James Bible, getting context, the main purpose of this study is people like to say God in three persons. They really like to promote the pagan trinity. And I've proven, and we're going through the whole Old Testament to the New Testament, every time person is used, we're going to find out together, has it ever been a reference to anybody like just the body, or just the soul, or just the spirit by itself, or is it every time it's used, all three are involved. It has to have all three to be considered a person. Now we know the Webster's 1828 Dictionary states that a person is someone who has a body, soul, and it's referred to, always referred to someone who's living, never referred to someone who's dead. And when you're living, you have a spirit. And the other definitions talk about referring to a man, woman, or child, or a man, woman, and child in this office performing this task. So it's always a reference according to the Webster's 1828 Dictionary. But remember, the Webster's 1828 Dictionary is not our final authority. The Word of God is. So, we're going to go back to Deuteronomy. We're in the book of Deuteronomy, making our way through the Bible. We're going to start in Deuteronomy 1, chapter 1, verse 15. Chapter 1, verse 15, we're going to go to 18. And a lot of times the context, it's, oh, it's amazing, brothers and sisters in Christ, that the context, when you start reading and you go, wait a minute, this is the context. And I'll show you what I'm talking about with our first example of the word person. 15 through 18. So I took the chief of your tribes, wise men and known, and made them heads over you, captains over thousands, and captains over hundreds, and captains over fifties, and captains over tens, and officers among your tribes. And I charged your judges at that time, saying, Hear the cause between your brethren, it's a key word, and judge righteously between every man, another key word, and his brother, these are people with body, soul, and spirit, and the stranger that is with him, ye shall not respect persons in judgment, but ye shall hear the small as well as the great, ye shall not be afraid of the face of man, for the judgment is God's, and the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me, and I will hear it. And I command you at that time all the things which ye should do. And you go back to verse 17, ye shall not respect persons. Who's that talking about? Okay, you go back to verse 16, it talks about it. Um, Hear the cause between your brethren, that's the persons, the brethren. And judge righteously between every man, that's who person's referring to. And his brother, and the stranger that is with him, those are the, that's the persons that it's talking about. It's talking about people, men and women, people that are being judged, that have a body, soul, and spirit. And what it's talking about here, when it says respect to persons, it's talking about someone who's popular, someone who's rich, versus someone who's poor, someone who's popular, over someone who's not well known, um, someone who's great, versus, like it says, great, uh, here the small as well as the great. You're not supposed to be a respecter of persons. Everybody's supposed to be judged righteously, the same way. There's no favoritism, another word to show it. So a person here has been a reference to men and women that are being judged that have a body, soul, and spirit. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay. Now let's jump down to Deuteronomy chapter 10, 15. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 15. And we're going to go to 22. Only the Lord had a delight in thy fathers to love them, and he chose their seed after them, even you above all people as it is this day. Circumcise therefore the foreskin of your heart, and be no more stiff-necked. For the Lord your God is God of gods and Lord of lords, a great God, a mighty and terrible, with, which regardeth not persons, nor taketh regard. Okay. He doth execute the judgment 
of the fatherless and widows, and loveth the stranger in giving him food and raiment. That next verse does the context of what person, he's not a respecter of persons. Okay? Fathers, someone has a body and soul spirit. Widow, someone has a body, soul, and spirit. A stranger, okay? Stranger, uh, somebody outside his, the Jewish people. Body, soul, and spirit. Okay? God is not a respecter of persons, and we're supposed to do our best not to be a respecter of persons. Um, we're going to 22. So right there, the context of person there is including somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. Verse 19 is where we're at. Love ye therefore the stranger, for ye were strangers in the land of Egypt. Thou shalt fear the Lord thy God, him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. He is thy praise, and he is thy God, that hath done for thee these great and terrible things which thine eyes have seen. Thy fathers went down into Egypt with threescore and ten persons. Second time in this section that we're reading that the word persons there. And now the Lord thy God hath made thee as the stars of the heaven for multitude. What's this talking about? Well, a score is 20, so this says three score and 10. 70 people went into Egypt. You read the story about Joseph getting sold into Egypt, and Jacob and his 12 sons, which later became the, the 12 tribes of Israel, and they're all their servants, and their sons, their wives, their kids, their servants, 70 people went into Israel. 400 years later, they came out, and God hath made thee as the stars of heaven for multitude. So that's what this is talking about. But the persons it's talking about is the 70 people that went into Egypt. It includes Jacob. It includes uh, Benjamin, Judah. Uh, Joseph was already there. Um, but it probably still included Joseph. But these are people that have a body and a soul and a spirit. Once again, you can't get around that. Person, in order to be considered a person... You have to have a body, soul, and spirit. Now we're going to go down to Deuteronomy chapter 15, verse 19. Deuteronomy 15, verse 19. And we're going to read all the way down to the end of the chapter. All the firstling males that come of thy herd and of thy flock, thou shalt sanctify unto the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not, thou shalt do no work with the firstling of thy bullock, nor shear the firstling of thy sheep. They are supposed to be without blemish. Okay. Uh, 20. Thou shalt eat it before the Lord thy God year by year in the place which the Lord hath, shall choose. Thou and thy household. Okay, so you got these two, the bullock and the sheep, uh, the firstling of the flock. And we're going to find out later what happens if they're, um, what's the word, uh, if they're without blemish or they have blemish. Sorry about that. Verse 21, and if there be any blemish therein, as if it to be lame, or blind, or have any ill blemish, thou shalt not sacrifice it unto the Lord thy God. Okay. Thou shalt eat it within thy gates. The unclean and the clean person shall eat it alike as the roebuck and as the heart. 23. Only thou shalt not eat the blood thereof, thou shalt pour it upon the ground as water. Now, person... Talk about unclean and clean persons. I went and grabbed a verse, Nova, uh, Numbers 19, chapter 19, verse 11. He that toucheth the dead body of any man shall be unclean seven days. So unclean person, it's somebody who's considered unclean and they have to be outside the camp. Okay. Um, Joshua, we'll be getting there. Um, when they went to war... And they were told, you're going to wipe these people out. There was times like uh, Jericho, they're not to touch, uh, take any of the spoils and everything. Um, but when they went out to war and they killed, when they came back, they didn't come straight back into the camp and throw a feast for the, what the Lord has done for them and get to hang out with their wives and children. They had to stay outside the camp for seven days. 
be considered clean again so they could come back into the camp. So unclean versus clean shows that the, everybody is allowed to eat, shall eat within the gates. The unclean and the clean gates were on the edge of the city. Okay? And when I look at this verse, it kind of opens my eyes and say, you know what? Could this be a reference, a future reference prophecy also of Jesus Christ? You can't have a perfect sacrifice that has blemish. Jesus was without blemish. Blemish. He rode into the town on the donkey. He was paraded just like they would do with the lamb. They would walk the lamb in front of everybody that's without blemish. They'd go into the temple and they would spend days checking that lamb, making sure it was perfect. It didn't have any blemishes before they would sacrifice it to the Lord. Jesus was paraded in on the donkey. Then after that, that's when everybody came to him trying to question him to catch him in error to find a fault in him. They tried to make him out to be a sinner. Okay. When they couldn't do that, the testing phase, he was considered perfect. What happened after that? He was sacrificed on the cross. Now, the clean and unclean, us, uh, for, further down in the Bible, Peter has that dream about unclean animals and clean animals. Uh, now, God opened the door for us to go to heaven. I found that very interesting. But as we see here, person is a reference to somebody who has a body, soul, and they're living, a spirit. It's not referencing people that... Um, it's not reference to some just a body. It's not a reference to just a spirit or a ghost. You can't call a spirit a person. You can't call a soul a person by itself without implying that they each have a body soul of their own. And that's the whole point of this study, brothers and sisters of Christ, to always stay in the Word, always stay in studies, and to stand firm to the Godhead of the Bible. Deuteronomy 16, 18. Turn there for our next reference. Deuteronomy 16, 18. Talk about judges again. Judges and officers, thou shalt make thee in all thy gates, which the Lord thy God giveth thee, throughout thy tribes, and they shall judge the people with just judgment. Thou shalt not rest judgment, thou shalt not respect persons. Neither take a gift, for a gift doth blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. That which is altogether just shalt thou follow, that thou mayest live and inherit the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Okay? Respecter of persons again. Who's the respecter of persons? It's using the opposite by saying people who bring gifts. If I'm going to get judged and I come to you and say, this is a gift. Honest. It's a bag of gold, but it's just a gift. Um, you're going to tend to show favor towards that person. When, you're to, when they're to judge, they're to judge righteously and treat everyone equally. The law applies to everyone. The laws that God put down. And who's person referring to? Whoever broke that law. Whoever's being judged. Body, soul, spirit. But it also talks about how it's a warning that you're not to, um, they're not to receive gifts. People who are put in a position to judge are not to take in gifts. Because it says there, because when you start doing that, uh, when you start being a respecter of persons and when you start taking gifts, it says that, you'll be, that it will blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. And we've seen that a lot in these battle buildings. Uh, these people that are in ministry just to make money and they're a respecter of persons. They respect the people that donate the most. And I'm not saying that um, good, Bible-believing, God-fearing ministries are worthy of donations. They are. But they need to be careful not to be a respecter of persons. So, that is person in Deuteronomy chapter 16. We're going to jump down to Deuteronomy chapter 27. A big jump down. Jump forward, as I should say. 27, 25. We're only doing one verse because it's pretty self-explanatory. Cursed be he that taketh reward to slay an innocent person, and all the people shall say, Amen. And verse 24 uh, says, Cursed be he that smiteth his neighbor secretly, and all the people shall say, Amen. Okay. 
What it's talking about here is someone taking money to kill somebody who's innocent. It's uh, what is it? a good example today is you have a father that has lots of money and the son pays somebody to kill the father so they can have the inheritance. The father's innocent, hasn't done anything wrong. But greed motivated the son to pay someone. And that person that does it, it says, Cursed be that. Cursed be he that taketh reward. So a person there is a reference to somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. Okay. Um, people like to take vengeance. Uh, I think someone told me this person did this to me. And I'm going to hire someone to kill him. And the person winds up being innocent. Cursed is that man that kills, uh, that takes the reward for slay an innocent person. Mm -hmm. So person, body, soul, and we're always referring to someone as living. Deuteronomy 28, 49. Because right there, just real quick, in case anybody says this, it says, reward to slay an innocent person. person has to be alive in order to slay him. So they don't say, well, he's already dead, and they're calling him a person. No. Person has to be alive in order to slay him. Can't kill something that's already dead, basically. Deuteronomy 28, next chapter, verse 49. We're going to go through to 51. Last reference to person in Deuteronomy 28, verse 49, where we're going to start. Make sure that's right. Okay. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from a from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flieth, a nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand, a nation of fierce countenance, which, which shall not regard the person of the old, nor show favor to the young. And he shall eat the fruit of thy cattle and the fruit of thy land, until thou be destroyed, which also shall not leave thee either corn, wine, or oil, or the increase of thy kind, or flocks of thy sheep, until he have destroyed thee. The prophecy, uh, if, you do, if they do wrong, this is going to happen. Or they might have already done wrong, this is going to happen. But the whole point is the context of person there. Okay? They see, verse 50, A nation of fierce countenance which shall not regard the person of the old. Okay? Whose person here? Talking about. Whatever old person is there, they're not going to say, okay, this old person, we're going to show mercy to him because he's old. Uh, the young here, it says that, nor show favor to the young, okay? Person of the old is talking about a man that's aged. They're not going to spare him. You always heard, like, uh, spare the women and children. You've got to have mercy and spare the women and children. They're saying that they will not, they will not spare the elders. They're, they're going to be treated the same, okay? They're not going to spare anybody. So a person here is a reference to a man that's elderly that has a body, soul, and spirit. Okay? A man that falls under the aged. Okay? Regard not the person of the old. Once again, body, soul, and somebody who is living. So thank you for sticking along with me. This person study I was so excited to do. And we're going to keep going through and... Just go together, learning together the context of person. And why is that? Because it is so important, so important, that you never say, brothers and sisters of Christ, you believe in the Godhead of the King James Bible, and you don't say uh, God in three persons. God the Father is not a person, it's the soul. And God, uh, Holy Spirit is not God the Spirit. Uh, the Holy Spirit, because there's only one capital G, God, the Father. 1 Corinthians 8, chapter 6, I believe. The Holy Spirit is not a person. And I've talked to people that stand for the Trinity. They don't believe God the Father has a body, soul, and spirit of his own, yet they have no problem saying person. They don't believe the Holy Spirit has a body, spirit, and soul of his own, yet they have no problem calling him a person. Now, Jesus Christ has a body. God the Father is in him. They are one. He has a soul. The Holy Spirit is in him. He has a spirit. Holy Ghost. Spirit. He is a person. He is the only person of the Godhead. And when we get to the New Testament, I've already proved it in videos, but we'll go over it again, how Jesus is the only one ever referred to as a person as far as the Godhead is concerned. So, thank you for sticking through this with the word studies. I think word studies are very important in a Christian's life. 
uh, subject studies. Uh, stay in the Word of God, brothers and sisters. Stand, stand, stand for the King James Bible, for absolute truth. I'm slowly getting attacked here and there by people who are put, basically putting down the perfection that God has given us in English, the King James Bible being perfect. They keep trying to say it's got errors. They're trying to get me to doubt, which I'm not going to. And they're probably out there trying to hammer away at you, brothers and sisters in Christ, trying to get you to doubt the Word of God. Stand strong. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. I'm praying for you, brothers and sisters of Christ. Keep me and my family in your prayers too. And we will see you in the next person word study.